That's the top shelf. Oh, again. Camera. His ball. So what do you see? Fantastic. Right here, you're talking about these two front feet right here. Okay, I see. So this is separate from the arm itself. And the camera just pops out and the top shelf. Of course, propellers. All right, now I've seen some people can't use drones instead of landing them. Another. Flipping it upside down. Fantastic. Is this a thing that you're just, allowed to do, or is it something that oh, yeah. people just do? People are going to do what they're going to do. I use some of these. I use these squares. Brand new stuff if you have like, spinning propellers that you're putting your hand or close to. So in those circumstances, you never Okay, cool. Yeah, so I would never do that. Ever. So I got a couple. Not wrong. Traditionally, landing it after you go, you get a little bit of 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 a of all the sensors and the auto leveling, which will put you down exactly the way that it's designed to. You can come in and land traditional FPV if you really want to be hardcore about it um, and use the double tap to start and stop the motors, but it's definitely not the recommended way to do it. And taking off is much easier, but especially if you're not used to this quad. Say hi yet, to the camera. Then taking off in Puppy. Mode and then which once you get I'm into a trying nice to call you Shepard. Shepard, so. Shepherd. say hi to the you camera. Can, if you're comfortable Shepherd. And you're, you know, you know if you know doing, Mass Effect, do <laughs> you know who I'm talking about? I'm gonna go sound like Grunt. But for those people who are getting Krugan, used to flying, the party. The majority of people that are Shepherd. 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 Shepherd.
right, now we're talking about English policy for a bit. Daniel Turn Markey said, I want to know everything about the camera, specs, frame rates, and resolution. So you get 4K at 50 and 60 frames, and at 1080, you get 50, 60, and 100, and 120. There's, I believe, two different color profiles. There's the normal, and then there's decent or like or a flatter profile to get just a smidge more than in the range for video. What are your settings, personally? I mean, for me, I, I want the most latitude in post, so I shoot 4K60 for everything. Um, now I shoot in the decent or like color profile because I want as much color information as possible. If you just want the best image out of camera and you don't want to do any post work, then you probably want to use the normal color profile. Some people will shoot in the 50 frames mode because they want it to be a little bit slower um, frame rate, but for me, if I want motion blur, um, I'm gonna add it in post. I would prefer to have the option for myself. Um, so I want it as sharp as possible and high resolution as possible, and then I can you know, tweak it any way I want. These are all settings we have right now, but then, of course, the cinematic mode will eventually come out, which will give us 24. So that's something I'm looking forward to. Marco asks, can you tilt the camera smoothly while flying in a straight line? An example for a chase speeding up. On the remote controller, you have um, two options. You have preset angles, so there's a switch on the right side that will put you like level uh, minus degrees and, and then positive degrees. But you also have a, a rocker wheel that gives you full tilt control. So anything that you're chasing or that you're trying to keep up with, you can fly and that's on the left side, designed so that with your finger on the throttle control, you can still tilt the camera up and down. Gavin says, how cinematic can the FPV footage get? Well, this one's kind of tricky because FPV is very much skill-based. I think really that question is about smoothness and kind of like the flow style of flying, which we consider to be like the kind of cinematic way of flying. And as Gene said, like that has a lot to do with pilot skill. There's different settings and stuff, like sport mode is sort of designed as a hybrid, um, so you can get those fast, cinematic looking shots. But in manual mode, so much of that is throttle control and the smoothness of the operator. Now speaking of flying smooth, I know one of the first things that people tend to start customizing is the rate. So how fast do you go through your pitch or rolls and all that? Now there was a kind of a traditional way of adjusting it with super rates and all that. But I noticed with this FPV drone, it's a whole different set of adjustments. Can you tell us a little bit about those? So we have three settings um, for under rates. Um, you have your center stick sensitivity, which is about literally how sensitive the stick is when it's in the center position. So if you want to be able to fly with a lot of precision, meaning like very quickly, um, and you don't want to have to move the sticks very far, that's what center stick sensitivity is. If you want it to react really quickly um, to your movements, then you're going to adjust that center stick sensitivity. Max rate is the rate that the drone responds on each axis to your stick input. When I go to do a flip or a roll and I'm pushing the stick, it's either moving too fast or too slow for my feel, the way that I want it, then that's what that max rate setting is for. Um, so that will specifically control how quickly the drone responds on each axis. And it's broken down on each axis for you. So if you want to specify which axis you want, maybe you just want the yaw um, to be a little bit slower, a little bit smoother, you can adjust just the rate on just the, the yaw axis. And then the final setting is the expo setting. So you can think of it as an overall setting that will affect both the center stick sensitivity and the tax rate setting. So if you were to raise the expo, then it starts off slower and then gradually gets faster and faster as you reach the end of the stick. Is that how that works? And that's the easiest way to explain it. The recommended way to do it would be to change one axis one rate parameter at a time. And it does take a lot of time to kind of get into the exact stick feel that you want, but that's the great thing about having rates is it's infinitely customizable to your flying style. What about low light performance of this drone? You know, for most people flying FPV, you're gonna to wanna to be flying in bright daylight. That's also how the drone's designed, how the sensors are designed. So it has a one by 2.3 inch sensor, which is the same size sensor as a lot of action cameras. So it's not really optimized for low light performance. Having said that, um, I have definitely shot in low light and at night. Um, and in those situations, it's all about subject matter. You know, so if you're shooting a lot of lights, for example, at night, it does a great job of doing that. But for the most part, yeah, it's, it's designed to, to be in bright daylight. Now Ross says, do you get motion sickness with FPV goggles? That's actually a good question. And actually, my girlfriend Carrie, she actually does get motion sickness. So she can only fly a few packs and then she's like, okay, I got it or take a Gremamine right beforehand. 
<laughs> so when you're first starting out, I would highly recommend using a chair. That seems to help a lot.